Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create disk images from the Titanic Explorer. Uh, we want to save those out as ISO files. That will allow us to play the game directly from the hard disk without having to swap disks. So I'm going to go ahead and download a piece of software called Infra Recorder, uh, which will allow us to uh, capture those disk images. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Infra Recorder and we're going to create disk images from the three Titanic Explorer disks. So I have the first disk in my CD-ROM drive and I'll start uh, Infra Recorder and I'll say Read Disk. Uh, notice that here we'll select uh, my CD-ROM drive. Then I'll go click into little dots and let's save uh, the disk images on the desktop. So I'm going to create a Titanic Explorer folder over here. And we'll go into that. Okay, and we'll, we'll save the first disk as Titanic 1. Titanic 1.iso. Save that out. Hit OK. This takes a long time, so I'll actually just speed up the video a little bit right here. Okay, so now the process is done. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and eject the first Titanic disk and put in the second one. Now I'll go ahead and once again just read the disk and give it a name. We'll call it Titanic 2. ISO. Hit save. Once again, this takes several minutes, so I'll go ahead and fast forward the video. Okay, so the second CD is done, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to put the third Titanic disk in my CD-ROM drive and we'll finish re reading that disk. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit read disk once again. We'll call it titanic3.iso. Hit save. Okay. Then we wait a little bit more and I'll fast forward the video. Okay, so the last disk is done. 
So now what we've done is uh, we've created uh, three image files with the disk contents uh, that will allow us to uh, play the game without having to uh, change disks, which is actually very, very convenient. Okay, so if we go inside a Titanic Explorer, we can now see there are three disk images. We no longer need to see these. So we're good to go. Now the next step is we have to download uh, software for a virtual machine because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing an operating system system within a virtual machine. Uh, this is because Titanic Explorer is no longer compatible with Windows. So we'll actually be using Linux to run it. So you can use any sort of uh, virtualization software you might have. Like if you're in a Mac, you can use Parallels. Um, I'm going to use something called VirtualBox. So let's just search for VirtualBox. Uh, what you want to see here is this Oracle VM VirtualBox. Uh, we'll click on Downloads. Uh, we'll see there are a couple choices over here. Uh, we'll take the Windows version. I uh, will let the download. Okay, now we run the installer. Okay, so I'll close out of this. Uh, it's asking me to download the VirtualBox extension pack. We'll say download. And then install. Um, we'll do an upgrade. We'll read through all this here. Say I agree. Now, if you're doing a fresh install of VirtualBox, it probably may not ask you to install that extension pack. You won't really need it, so it's not that important. Okay, the next step is to download an operating system to run within VirtualBox. Now, we're going to be using Windows XP. Uh, turns out that Microsoft actually uh, distributes a version of Windows XP for virtualization environments like VirtualBox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Google Chrome and I'm going to search for Windows XP mode. So you should get this page over here, download Windows XP mode from official Microsoft Download Center. Go down here and we'll select English or whichever language you want, I suppose. Hit download. Uh, we will do the first option here Windows XP mode EN under uh, dash US.exe. It's a fairly long download, so I'll actually uh, fast forward the video. Okay, so now the download's done. However, if you just try running it, uh, you'll actually see that it act doesn't work under Windows 10. So let's give it a try. See, it says Windows XP mode is only supported only in Windows 7 operating systems. So we're going to actually use a trick. Uh, there's another piece of software that we can use to extract the disk image from the installer. 
uh, it's called 7-zip so I'm going to go back to Google and I'm going to search for 7-zip now I'm just going to download this it's free software uh, we'll take Since I have a 64-bit machine, I'll just go ahead and download the EXE. And then I'll run that. Okay, so now I'm gonna we're actually gonna run 7-zip. It's called 7-zip file manager. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we wanna find the, the file that we downloaded the um, XP mode executable. Okay, so that's going to be under computer, C drive, users, RCT, downloads. Uh, here's Windows XP mode. Go right click, open inside, and then there's their sources. I'm going to say right click, open inside, and then there's XPM. And I'm going to once again do open inside, and that's going to unpack it. Now over here, there's this virtual XP V HD HD. I'm just going to say extract, and we'll actually go to the desktop and go into the Titanic Explorer directory that created. We'll just extract it there. Okay, that's done. So now I can close out of uh, 7-Zip and my web browser. I won't need those anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to open my Titanic Explorer folder, find a file I've just extracted. What I'm going to do is I want to rename this, and I just want to put a period uh, right behind the VHD. Hit enter, notice that the icon changes. So now what I'm going to do is close this window, go back into VirtualBox, and I'm going to hit new, and we're going to call this Windows XP and it says 32 bit so that's good hit next let's set it to 512 megabytes at least and now on the next screen let's ask for a hard disk we'll say let's use an existing virtual hard disk file and then i click on this icon here and i'm going to actually select the virtual xp vhd file and then i click create okay so now it's ready to go let's do one more thing let's go under settings what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add the Titanic uh, discs so that way I can play the game without having to uh, add them individually. So I go under storage and I click the little plus, the little CD-ROM to plus sign and then say choose disc and I'm going to select Titanic 1. Then I'm going to repeat the same process, hit the plus sign, choose a disc, select Titanic 2. And then actually we're going to go ahead and delete this drive. So we say, where it says empty, say remove attachment. Go back to the controller ID, hit plus, and add Titanic 3. Okay, and then you'll hit OK, and you should be good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and power on Windows XP. I did that by double clicking in the Windows XP icon. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the window, and you'll notice the mouse doesn't quite work. So there's actually a trick. Um, first of all, if, you're, if you, you can't find your mouse button, you can always hit control, the right control key. So I'll do that. And then I'll go under, underneath. Uh, input and I'll disable this mouse integration. If you do that you should be able to click now on the, on the Windows XP window and you should have a mouse. So I'll just go through this wizard. Next I'll call it Titanic. Titanic. And I'll create an administrator password.
Make sure you remember this password for later. Set it to Mountain Time. Okay, at this point, Windows XP will actually lock up. Basically, your mouse button will, will be locked. So what you do is you hit the right control key. That will release your mouse pointer. Then you go up here to the machine menu and just say reset. And then it says, do you want to reset it? Just hit reset. Okay, now I'm going to say turn off automatic updates, since I'm not going to really be connecting to uh, the internet. Hit apply, and OK. OK, now it's going to pop up this found new hardware wizard. Let's just say no, not at this time. And we can also dismiss this. Uh, OK, hit next. And uh, we'll do a cancel, and a cancel. Okay, well this thing keeps popping up, we'll just say cancel. And now let's go over here uh, to my computer. Uh, we can see we have the Titanic disk. So I'll do double click on the install. Then it's going to ask if you want to install QuickTime. Just say yes. Now I will say that it actually requires 30 days for activation, so this only work for 30 days. Um, oh, okay, let's continue with the installation of QuickTime. Okay, you can uncheck those two boxes. You don't want, um, unless you want to see the sample movie. Just hit finish, and we'll close out of this window. Uh, we'll close out of all the windows. Now we should actually have new programs installed. You'll have under Fox Interactive, Titanic Explorer. Okay, so now we have everything installed. Let's do one more thing. So what you want to do is you want to hit the right control key. And you want to go under where it says devices and you want to say install guest editions CD image. And then we'll just step through that wizard. Uh, there's going to be a couple of warnings, just say continue anyway. And then I'm going to ask you to reboot.
Now it will hang, so what you want to do is you want to hit the control, the right control key to release your mouse pointer, and then you're going to go under machine and say reset, and click reset. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page.